by Curl founder and maintainer Daniel Stenberg. My name is GN Park and I will be moderating the webinar. Uh, if we go to the next slide before we get started, um, I just wanted to mention that uh, Wolf SSL will be at the 11th annual Billington Cybersecurity Summit event on September 8th through 9th. Um, so you can email us at, at fax at wolfssl.com to book a meeting and register for the event on their website. Uh, and uh, to move on to the next slide, uh, just to note for this webinar, um, all attendees will be in listen-only mode. If you have any questions, please use the Q&A box or raise your hand to be unmuted. Um, and if you'd like to ask the question live during the Q&A session, um, please uh, yes, raise your hand and we will be hosting the Q&A session following the live presentation. The webinar will also be recorded and made available on our YouTube channel shortly after the presentation as well. Um, and I invite you to also follow us uh, on our Twitter at WolfSSL as well as our other socials. Feel free to email us if you have any additional questions or comments, um, again, at facts at wolfssl.com. And so I'd like to give a very brief company overview before we move to the more technical presentation. Uh, so Wolf SSL was founded in 2004 by Todd Auska and Larry Stefanik when they realized there wasn't an open source, dual licensed, um, embedded SSL library available. Um, so at that time, OpenSSL existed, but there was definitely a demand for an alternative that was easily portable, smaller, faster, available under a more clear commercial license, uh, was equipped with a clean and more modern API, and offered a commercial style developer support. And so Wolf SSL was really born into this market need um, with an open SSL cap compatibility layer. Today, Wolf SSL secures over 2 billion connections. We have more than 1,000 OEM customers and dozens of resellers. Uh, Wolf SSL is made up of nearly 40 employees in 2020, most of which are our engineers. Uh, this progress is, of course, supported by our really great partner network that we're very proud of, which includes Microsoft, Azure, Broadcom, and of course, Curl, just to name a few. Uh, and so since the beginning, our engineering team has developed several embedded security products. Um, this includes WolfCrypt with DO178 support, FIPS certification, and a FIPS ready offering, MQTT up to the version 5 specifica specification, SSH version 2, TPM 2.0, and a secure bootloader known as WolfBoot, as well as Java wrappers and JSSC support and commercial support for curl. Uh, so all of these offerings are accompanied through a thorough and maintenance and support plan up to the 24 seven level. And we also offer full service consulting. And so with all that being said, I'd like to really turn it over to Daniel to talk about uh, the curl. Okay, thank you. Hello, everyone. So yes, I'm Daniel. I assume a lot of you, most of you are already familiar with who I am. But I, um, of course, I started the CURL project in 1998 and I've been working with it since. A lot of internet transferring and, of course, open source since the beginning. Uh, 22 years and counting then. I nowadays, as mentioned already then, uh, I work for Wolf SSL, so I do curl, curl support full time these days. And I think that um, open source and um, doing things this way is a great way of doing software in, in the long term for stability and uh, quality. So I wanted to let you in how we do it in curl and how you could participate in the curl process of, of uh, ever expanding and improving curl and libcurl, of course. So this is uh, tonight's little agenda. It's tonight for me because I'm here in Sweden and that's why I have this funny accent. It might not be tonight if you're in the US because now you're in the morning. But okay, I want to start out a little bit about the curl community and how we communicate how we build curl just briefly, what we do to test it, how we submit our changes to the project. If we have a contribution we want to make a little bit about the feedback process, how we iterate to improve things on, on review comments, for example, a little bit out about how the merging process um, works or is supposed to work and what actually ends up in a release and when we do releases a little bit about that so and of course as mentioned already we do a q a in the end so whatever you think of uh, when i'm sitting here blabbering i'm actually outside this lovely summer's evening here in sweden so w if i say something you want to respond to or if it doesn't seem right add a question in the q a thing here at zoom and we'll get to it in the end i'm in no hurry we can 
we can take a lot of questions if you have any or if I'm unclear in any way. What my presentation tonight will not include, so I won't teach you how to code, I will talk about how to provide contributions. It doesn't actually have to be code, it could be spell fixes of the documentation, but I won't tell you about code at all. We won't talk about code, it'll be implied. You know how to code, or if you don't know how to code, which is also fine, but this is not the presentation in which you will learn how to code either. And I won't mention many URLs because URLs in presentations are usually not very fun anyway. So you, whatever I say tonight, you, you, can, you can just Google them up or you can find them on the curl website if you don't, uh, if it isn't straight clear in, in my presentation what it is about. And I also won't get much into what tools to use, like do you want to use Emacs or VI or do you want to use an IDE or which operating system is the one to use when you want to develop curl. I'm not going to make a judgment call there. You can pretty much make up your own mind and use whatever you want as long as you follow, follow the basic steps here. So that's just putting some of the ground rules here. So when we work on curl you <clears throat> or when we are you are we're all doing curl stuff we are not alone I, so doing things with curl is joining up with a pretty big community of others so so far our names of contributors uh, the, our list of names of contributors uh, consists of more than 2200 names and we uh, grow that list with roughly 200 new names per year and those are contributors people helping out reporting bugs bringing feedback to to uh, well good feedback to the project not necessarily writing code but helping out so they're contributing to the project and we are almost 820 unique authors to the project and those are actually people with their name to a commit in the source tree and we're adding new ones at the rate of about 100 new names per year so a lot of people are around this project so even if you my you, you may feel as a sort of a big task to get code into curl or get your contribution there you should know that a lot of other others have already done this and managed the procedure it's it can't be that hard, right? And while we don't have any fixed amount of maintainers in the curl project, it's not that we're sort of we're not in a, a tight group sitting somewhere waiting. We're a bun loosely connected bunch of people. We're roughly 15 active maintainers, give or take uh, uh, an ordinary week or month or so. Maybe we're only five one week and we're almost 20 the other week. People come and go a little bit. Um, attention goes up and down and, and depending on people's lives and work habits and everything is things go up and down so yeah but roughly speaking we're we have somewhere in the ballpark of 30 to 50 different pull requests in progress all the time sitting in github so if you go to the curl github repository right now you'll see that we have i think it's 30 pull requests there right now or maybe uh, well in that vicinity so there's there is always a whole bunch of um, different changes in progress or waiting to get merged waiting to get reviewed waiting to get attention maybe maybe we're waiting for someone to update them maybe they're still sort of maturing in there so <clears throat> you can go there and you can see that there's always this activity activity in curl is not of course just code or contributions or or whatever there's a community you know there's a lot of people involved here i mentioned 15 maintainers but there's also a very long tail of people contributing and hanging around participating on and off to even more irregular schedule perhaps so the primary place to go with questions support brainstorm suggestions um, ideas debugging roadmap feedback whatever basically around curl development and, and lib curl and anything you go to the curl library mailing lists and you talk there discuss there uh, complain there um, old style traditional open source mailing list but if you have an issue a bug or you have a more concrete pull request or change request then a pull request is github speak really to provide a patch on, on github so if you have more than specific issues and pull requests you go directly to the github repository and you submit it there well if you want to more do it even more casually M maybe you want to hang around and chat with other curl users or curl developers who hang around in cur uh, irc all day 
you go to the curl irc channel that is even more laid back casual you can talk about anything basically we try to keep it curl oriented but often it goes off in tangents and we talk about other things as well that's a 24 7 channel up uh, all the time with uh, i think we're well a whole bunch of people there on and off going on away coming back and talking curl and curl related stuff and of course if you find a security problem or if you sus even just suspect a security problem we go to the curl hacker one board or whatever we keep since you submit those sort of privately to us and we communicate about potential security problems privately before we can uh, confirm them being secure problems or <laughs> agree that they're not so th those are basically the four different communications channels that a, a contributor to curl want to be aware of and of course we're all nice to each other in this project with we're not we're not nasty we're we're trying to get everyone to feel welcome and be on board and we're all friends here we're all on the same team we have a code of conduct of course that says that you should behave and be nice and that's what we do here okay so getting into the actual technical process here so we want to land coding curl so how do you do that of course we first need to get the curl code right <clears throat> Uh, that's actually real curl code here in the background of my slide. So the, you can, of course, do changes to curl in many ways, but the primary way to do it is using Git and GitHub. So you start out by cloning the GitHub repository, maybe. But if since we're uh, planning to actually change code here, you're, you're better off actually making a fork of the curl repository first into your own private repository. Uh, well, account on GitHub, and then you clone that, and then you start uh, working on, on changing that code. And of course, you, you make sure that you get the code from curl and from not from anywhere else. Um, these days, you can get curl code from a lot of different places, since a lot of different places nowadays, they package curl in different scenarios and for different purposes, and they will also host the code somewhere sometimes. And, and it might be tempting to get that code somewhere sometimes but if you want to actually contribute back code to us it's much better if you actually get the repos uh, the curl well the code repository the core torball the, the clone the, curl, the git clone from from us it'll be much easier and smoother so and I, we also encourage you to always get the latest that's the git master branch so that you actually get all of the latest bug fixes or the latest uh, crazy things we've done to the code instead of building on on something older that we might have changed or, or moved away from s since that version. So you get the code first. And of course, when you've got the code, you want to build it, of course, right? Because what that's what you do with code. And we strongly encourage you to build the unmodified version first, because if you <laughs> that makes sure that your, your tools and the infrastructure and you have everything set up to actually build everything without you doing any changes at all to start with. And of course, primarily we use all the tools. That's the configure way of building uh, Unix style, Linux, Unix, BSD, or CMake. And we have a different set of Windows uh, build systems supported by default. You could go with either of those and they will all be fine. They, they all have their ups and downs, but they're supported. When if you run into any problems, you ask on the mailing list and we work it out. A lot of people have done it before and, and uh, they're all fairly well documented in the in the documentation tree, so you can learn how to do it. And then when you built everything, you can run make test, and it'll run all the test cases automatically that comes with curl. That's a lot of test cases. Okay, you manage to do all that. Everything runs fine. All the tests are good, and of course they should be because you haven't modified anything and yet. And uh, of course the default code in the master branch in curl should always be fine. Uh, curl code is written in C and more specifically the C99, no, sorry, not 99, 89 standard, sometimes called C90 as well. That's basically the oldest form of N ANSI C that you can find, which is a very old traditional, uh, yeah. So um, there's no there's no option here if you want to contribute code to the actual product curl or lib curl you can't avoid this and that's a strict rule just deal with it 
you have to maybe you have to unlearn some habits or you have to sort of realize what this means but it's still it's not a big deal you can you can do it a lot of people have done it and of course <clears throat> you need to follow the code style so you can't just make up your own code style in in curl you have to follow and basically you can just read the code that exists already and you see the style we're using you have to follow that style and if you're not following that style someone will complain about it when you submit the code most likely an automatic tool that will say you broke the style and of course we have documentation so if you change code um, or add a feature or whatever you do chances are you you also need to update the documentation and make sure to do that because we we won't accept changes to behavior or new features that uh, if the documentation isn't sort of updated accordingly and of course we also want if you add features if you change behaviors you might you if you change behaviors you you very well might need to update tests or if you add new features new behaviors you need to add tests to make sure that those features actually work and, and work the way you have intended them to work and that actually when run on other platforms they still work so keep the code style make sure the documentation is still correct and check tests and how do we test curl code well one one way to do it if you do it the order tools way build well it's like on if you build on linux i prefer building on linux so therefore i show you the linux way you you can run configure with this option dash dash enable debug it'll uh, enable very picky compiler options for your compiler so you will have much more warnings and the uh, um, picky compiler so that to not let any suspicious behavior through in the code i think that's awesome because and then it'll stop on it make it'll convert all warnings to errors it'll stop on any suspicious thing you've done and this is a fancy way to run the code style checker check source we call it in, in curl so if you run this it'll scan through all the c source code in, in the source tree and make sure that you actually adhere to the code style it doesn't actually check everything but most of it so if uh, if this says fine you're mostly fine and of course you run all the tests with make tests so when you've changed your code and you can your code style is fine and you can run all the tests you're in a pretty good situation and then you can commit and push the code and really 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 you you want your own local branch in your uh, git repository i told you um, earlier that you wanted to have your own fork of the curl project on github and you also want to make sure that you have you make your particular change now in a, in a new branch for that particular change and i'll explain why in a, in a second but it's branches and git is really easy and cheap and, and quick so it's not a big burden you just create a new branch do your change there uh, do everything polish everything commit it in that branch nice and clean and if you want to go for gold points and i'm sure that a lot of people don't do most people actually don't do this for their first changes maybe not for the second either but if you want to really go up there in the top quality um, sort of code contributors in curl you follow the git message tem template it's also documented so, so that we have a certain style of making uh, writing git commits uh, well the message in the git commits so you can at least get inspired by uh, older ones and then when you've done that you you commit and you push your uh, your personal branch in your personal fork to github and once you've done that you can create a pull request to the upstream curl project then the, the into the curl repository in the curl organization so this curl slash curl on, on github so of course you submit your dedicated branch i mentioned and you sort of request a pull from that branch into the upstream project that is our project curl right um, and when you do that you will well you will get feedback because nothing until you get feedback nothing happens basically and when you get feedback you start to amend the branch you created for this particular change to adapt to the feedback right so if if we start to discuss in in the pull request uh, maybe you should have named it the option this way maybe you should consider doing it that way here's a 
cool helper function you could use. This is how we usually do it. So you, you could be sure that, I mean, in order to get your change to actually land in curl, you need to listen in what people are saying. Maybe you don't agree to everything, but then you can always sort of argue your point and we can go back and forth until we all agree that this is a change we want, we need, and in a way that we can actually merge eventually. So the PR, the pull request, will also trigger a large amount of CI jobs. That's, you know, continuous integration jobs and tests and analysis. Um, we're right now up to almost 90 different CI jobs that will kick off uh, on every push to this branch now. So you created it and now it'll start 90 different jobs and they will all, not all, well, in most of them will build curl uh, test curl and check for different things on different platforms and with different option combinations and everything and over time well during the first I mean from the pull request for the, it'll take you maybe an hour to go, go through all of them and you will see them pop in uh, <laughs> ideally they will all turn out green in in the pull request but some of them will turn out red and then you better investigate why they turn out red is it a failed test case did I end up with a compiler warning, whatever. Fail compiler warnings are of course subject to get fixed by you. Test failures, probably your fault as well. Sometimes, unfortunately, we get false positives, but then you, if you really don't understand what happened, you can just ask and someone will help you interpret what, what the heck, what does it actually mean? Why is it red? Did I do something wrong? So. <clears throat> and and really th those that kind of feedback is going to be the first feedback you get in the pull request because the, the first feedback is going to pop up within minutes after your pull request is done right so if you did if, if for example violate uh, the code style you will get warnings pretty quickly about you know too long line you didn't have a space here you have wrong indentation there and those things are easy to fix, amend, and then you just push an update again. It might take a while to actually get a human response. I mean, it depends on a lot of things, right? Because not all of us are always, you know, waiting for the next pull request. Maybe we're busy doing something else. Maybe we're asleep. Maybe we're on vacation or busy fixing a bug that is uh, tearing my hair off. So it might take some time until you get an actual human to get you that feedback. But in the meantime, you can start working on those automated uh, responses because most humans won't um, remark on the same things that the tools already pointed out because it's pointless right since if the tools already pointed out the problem you already have things to work on okay so that is about you know that's that's the code working that and you're uh, amending it to fix the problems and th i just wanted to mention then there about copyright and license here because we're talking about really um 100% open source stuff here, right? Curl is licensed under an MIT-like license. So it's a, it's a very liberal license and uh, there's no, we don't have any contributor license or anything. You don't need to sign or, or agree to anything really to contribute code to our project. But we assume you have the right by your action by submitting code. So when you submit code to the project to be, get included, we assume that you have the right to and you are allowed by your company or whoever you're working for at the moment or not to contribute this code and if you do have a large change you are allowed to bring your own copyright line in code if you if you insist it it's rare it's really necessary or it's really not important actually because curl is open source it will always be open source most copyright lines um, so far is actually mine what are you what you're not allowed to in any way is interfere with or be incompatible in with the license that curl is uh, using already so you really must follow it and there are actually you need to be compatible with other licenses as well because we want curl to be as um well curl needs to be free uh, freely licensed in a way and and possible for everyone to use in all uh, at least open source license projects so it shouldn't violate or be in conflict with any other popular open source license either <clears throat> so i mentioned the curl ci the building of everything kicks off almost 90 different jobs well right now it's 90 it's actually 
a year ago we were on 45 and a year before that we were on 22 so we've actually <laughs> doubled every year the last few years so uh, i won't guarantee that we have 180 in an, in a year but most likely we have more than 90 in a year we're adding more because adding more is ci builds is a way to make sure that we really ma uh, maintain build quality that we we don't break anything with commits so we do a lot of tests and sanitize and analysis analysis and uh, on a different range of different uh, well platforms cpus and a lot of different configurations because you can build curl with so many way different ways and, and um, build combinations so it really helps to have the ci try out a lot of things so that we don't mess up and of course as I mentioned before, we do have some false positives sometimes in the in the test suite, and that is terribly annoying. And we're working really hard to to reduce the amounts of false positives and really make sure that we avoid them. But uh, it's it's a it's a never-ending game. And when we have 90 builds, you can be sure that it's actually quite rare that we have all the 90 builds without any false positives. Really unfortunate. But sure, and that's you know that's a, a way for you to contribute. If you can make the CI jobs more stable, we would love you. Um, so when you want to fix something in in um, in a branch that you did when you started the pull request, you just do follow up commits to that branch, and the <laughs> CI builds will restart when you commit new commits. <coughs> okay. And that, that's about the machines then testing. A lot of CPU power is spent then testing your pull request. And I talked about humans. It'll take a while until a human shows up in the in the in the pull request and will review your code or contribution, whatever. Um, doesn't have to be code. But and I want to emphasize that anyone can review a pull request. It could be any random stranger on the internet showing up in the GitHub repository and providing comments on 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 the pull request. And we really encourage anyone and everyone to do this, uh, even though, of course, uh, you and me know that maybe every random stranger on the Internet is not exactly who you're longing to get feedback from. But you can expect that a bunch of maintainers tend to watch out for what I what I call their areas here within quotes, because we don't really have we don't designate specific maintainers for specific areas we're all taking care of curl combined and, and together so there's we don't own areas nobody owns an area in curl but we're all maybe have a special interest and we're all particularly skilled or, or experienced in different areas so therefore we know that oh there's a code about this particular thing well then i know that these guys or that he or she or happens to be very good or interested in that and then we try to get them involved in that particular pull request and you can be fairly sure that i will be there to review your code um, that's at least how it usually works um, at least if there's something i can have something to say about there are actually some sub areas that i don't really know much about and i will shut up about it and let someone else do deal with it but Basically, someone, if you never did a pull request before, you you ha just have to wait for a human to show up. I mean, maybe if you have to wait for several days, I, th I figure it's uh, warranted to just ask, hello, is anyone there? Can someone take a look? But I don't think you have to ask that uh, particularly often. So, okay. You've submitted a pull request, someone is reviewing a lot of the CI stuff. So who decides if this is a good new feature then? Uh, we're getting a lot of pull requests and you want to add a feature. Who decides if this is a good feature? Well, I I always want to... When, when we're adding things to curl, it has to be URL slash transfer related and or uh, you can... Um, well, it, with unless you have a very good explanation so if you're into this area you're in a good position if you're not you're in a bad position but of course it's a discussion and you can argue for why we need this in curl and why we want it this way and not another way and there's no firm there's no no firm set of rules here 
you can bring whatever idea you want and we can discuss it but you may not get agreement from many others or we can disagree within the group of course and then we argue back and forth and we can have a discussion usually it ends up with me having the final say i very rarely actually use some kind of veto power or anything it's basically just sort of a hierarchy we often come to a consensus that this is the way it should be we should agree we agree to not do it or we agree to do it and usually often also how to do it and whatever we decide or agree on we can always bring it back later on right so if we agreed on something years ago and you find that a closed pull request from years ago or maybe you find a, a discussion we had on the mailing list back in the 90s it's always okay to bring that back How, well what about now then the situation could have changed quite a lot you know things on the internet change protocol change people change applications change so maybe things are different now maybe we can reiterate that decision maybe maybe do it differently and of course when you do a pull request it uh, it will sometimes burn a little bit so you need to amend it and um, you of course have your right uh, and I mean this is not a about code and everything it's not always about who's right and wrong right it's not always just ones and zeros you can argue no no you're I, I think my way is better because it makes it more readable code because and it's perfectly fine for to argue that you don't have to accept anyone's comments just because they've been around in the curl project for 20 years you may still be more correct and it, i generally i, I um, suggest that if you do small changes incremental things do a follow-up commit just you know do it amend it amend it amend it so do more 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 commits until everything looks fine then you can squash them up uh, into a single commit maybe or a few commits if you think that's more logical and then sort of force push that onto the branch talking git terms here um, usually i want it that way because first when you get when i get a pull request first i get a you know few hundred lines of code changed then i want to read those 100 lines of codes and see them and if you add a lot of different follow-up commits eventually it turns out really hard to see where the code is actually going what does, what did it actually do because you have one commit changing one thing the next one changing back again the third changed it there a third way and the four five six, six different ways so it's, if you change a lot it's better to squash them up into a single commit again and, and submit that because it makes it much easier for the for the reviewers to actually get the full picture and of course as i mentioned before mech checks source an excellent way to just verify the code style so that you know that you're at least follow the code style so when you've done that excellent pull request you've all the ci's are green the s thumbs up from the reviewers you get that you know approved pull request what happens then someone um will merge your thing and when it comes down to features if you're adding something or basically changing behavior something that it what that we qualify as a feature that isn't a bug fix um, you have to wait to the right point in time but if you s fix a bug we can merge it at any point in the release cycle so if you fix a bug we can merge it as soon as everything looks fine in the pr we merge it but if you want to merge a feature you have to get it merged in the feature window feature window being a time period in time when we accept features which happens to be only half the release cycle so in the beginning of the re re release cycle we accept features in the other half of the cycle we don't accept them so then in that case if you submit a feature in when the feature window is closed we will just keep it waiting it'll just sit there in github and wait for the feature window to open again so which, which happens after the next release then it opens again and we can merge it and when one when someone merges the pull request it is often me but it doesn't have to be me we're we're i think we're around 22 different people who can do it uh, i mean who have the powers and, and permission to do it we merge it with a closest one two three four comment in the git uh, message in the git commit message and that that's instruction here closes blah 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 it, it tells github to close the pull request when that commit is merged so it'll close and bang when it says closed by and the commit hash you know that it's been closed because it was merged into 
curl master re release and bam you can check that off as uh, mission accomplished you merge code into curl yay you're you're part of that and you know that the next pr will be much easier because the first pr to land is really really hardest and you haven't really maybe you haven't mastered all the steps you haven't mastered all the tools and and got to know the people and 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 everything but the next time you know what to expect and now you can maybe consider reviewing other pull requests you know fellow first time committers like yourself maybe a few of those that i mean actually i would say a large percentage of the pull requests that are sitting in at github right now there are done they are done by first time committers such as yourself so we're all in the, sort of in the same team here in the same boat so you could help out there and why not take the opportunity so when you've once you've actually landed your code maybe you could go back and check the, the documentation does it actually match the, your experience here or or is it could we improve this so that we will get it even better for the next one because there will be a next one right so we have roughly well almost 10 new con committers every month in the curl project so there are a lot of new first timers and we should do our best to really help them through here because we're all in the same team and really everything is much via pull requests right so uh, we all do pull requests it's not only the first time committers or even the few time committers i do all my changes as pull requests everyone in curl makes their changes as pull requests so you will see a lot of pull requests showing up at github and you have the chance to to see them review them comment on them on everything of course pull requests done by more experienced maintainers and developers in curl might sit around for a shorter period of time because they and show up there the, the ci jobs turn out green you get a few comments you address them and then you merge so that was happened so once you've done your job you landed your things in in this in the pull request someone merged it into the master branch what happens then after you've changed it landed in sits there in in the curl git repository it sits there in the master branch and then the time comes from a curl release and a curl release is done regularly uh, we we'll try to do it you know schedule the release in the calendar actually years ahead so we know when the next release is except always every eight weeks except when we mess up and we change the schedule and we when we put out the curl release we basically tag the master branch and we ship everything that is exists in the master branch at the time of the release so if you're in the master branch you know yeah well you're not you're not in the well if your code is in the master branch you know that it will be part of the next release and all future releases until we fix it or change it uh, so then if you're not in the master branch possibly because your pull request hasn't been merged yet you know that there's always another chance in the next release or the next release or the next release or the next release right it never ends and something that actually never really times out it's just a matter of giving up if you don't give up it, it'll never be too late we can just polish everything until it suits us we can merge it and then it'll end up in a release and we do releases as i said every eight weeks if things goes uh, exactly the way we want them so smooth ride every eight weeks if we run into bumps maybe we do patch releases in between that's the that's the sort of the ride we're doing here so i get the question quite often quite quite sorry quite often then so what should I work on if I, if I really want to help out in the curl project? Because I obviously a lot of people think they rather they want to help out without having a good idea what to do in the curl project or what what change should I do? What feature do you want? What p patches should I work on? And my suggestions are always look look into your own use cases. Maybe scratch your own itch. Is there anything in curl or libcurl for your use that you're sort of you're not quite happy with or you think it's a little bit itchy so there uh, maybe you should improve those things first because that's a very good motivation for yourself fix that spelling error in the documentation you've seen so many times fix that little thing that you've been annoyed with or or make sure that it, that little feature works exactly the way your application wants it to work and submit a fix for that i think that is the best way but if you're if you're 
open for going beyond that, check out existing issues in GitHub. We have a lot of bug, uh, bug reports filed on GitHub actually all the time, which is kind of funny, right? We've, as I said, we've ex been around for 22 years, so how can we have so many bugs? But uh, there's obviously no shortage of bugs, not in our project either. So there's a lot of people having problems and a lot of the work with issues and bugs, of course, is to figure out, is it really a bug? Understand what happens here. Did the user do something wrong? Should we rather clarify this in a documentation instead or stuff like that? And of course, that takes a lot of human energy and power. So that's an excellent way to help out. And if not, you can go to these documents and known bugs or the to do documents and they're they actually have uh, in total over 200 different items listed, things that we know are buggy and faulty, we should fix sometimes, and ideas about things we should add or improve and to, to make the project better at some point. So there's a lot of things to do there if, if you really want to dive into the project. Uh, you'll never run out of ideas, or we and we don't really. And we really want you to succeed because, as I've said several times here, we're all on the same team. We are Curl and we don't have any, there's no opponents here, there's no other team. We're all just Team Curl, right? So if you run into any problems, concerns, doubts, issues, just run into a wall, I can't figure out how this works, I need help, I can't understand it, just ask. As I mentioned in the beginning, we're a community, we're a mailing list, chat in the IRC chat, whatever uh, and i mean we're many people chances are someone has done something similar before or ran into the exact same problem that you're having uh, i would say that is likely even and of course we love you for helping out and being one of us so it's your questions and, and problems here are not a problem right we, it'll help us it'll help curl it'll, it'll improve everything so join in it's not a it's not a problem for us that someone is having problems. And I mean, worst case or whatever, if you end up not perhaps not able to do this change yourself or you run into a problem that's just bigger than you think it was or you could can handle, there's always commercial curl support, right? That's the guy um, uh, head of the curl project there. <laughs> and I work for Wolf SSL. We do curl com commercial support uh, every day, right? So. Get in touch with us and I'm sure we can help it out, uh, you out really soon, quickly and, and the way th it's supposed to be. Just in case you didn't, uh, you're not able to do it yourself, but in most cases you really are able to do it yourself. And here are two great resources. Of course, I said I wouldn't mention any URLs, but I lied. Here are two URLs to look out for. Well, the top one here is the developer section of the Curl website basically listing a lot of developer resources and links to documentations and, and uh, some automated things around curl showing things. And uh, below, uh, below that, of course, the GitHub curl repository where the code lives basically and the issues and the pull requests and everything. If you just go there, you will be fine development wise when going doing things for curl. Yep, that's it, I think. That's what I wanted to manage to go through. So any questions if you have questions concerns thoughts add them in the qa thing here in zoom and uh, we can get around to them awesome um we actually do have i think someone might have asked a question in the chat box um instead of the q a box but um i can still read it out it says um may i know the factors chosen when selecting the license for curl especially why i didn't choose um, I guess why didn't you choose Apache over MIT? Um, so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, it's, uh, that's actually a long separate story. But uh, Curl started out GPL licensed when I started, when I released it the first time. And then I realized that GPL license was a problem for everyone who wanted it to use it in, a, in different commercial surroundings. And then I, so I backpedaled a bit and released it under MPL instead. And then I had other the reverse problem because then people with GPL had problems with MPL and then I decided to I would go to the even more liberal way of doing it with the MIT license and it, <laughs> and as a lot of people like to point out 
we actually modified the MIT license early on. So it's actually not the exact wording of the MIT license. It's still the same spirit, but it's not exact. So, and I, I didn't go with uh, Apache because back in that day, when I did that, Apache was still GPL incompatible. And I, um, and I really didn't want a GPL incompatible license because it would limit how we would use it. <clears throat> so that's why. So I went with MIT for the maximum liberal uh, availability for everyone. Great. And um, uh, I think the second part to the question is whether curl documentation also doing via GitHub PRs markdown uh, uh, and how curl documentation contributions are usually done? Yes. Uh, well, uh, uh, most of the curl contribute um, the, sorry, the curl documentation, most of it is uh, is exists in the Git uh, repository as well. So yes, those are just files in the Git repository. And you would just change them and submit them as pull requests as well. That's how we typically do it. There's There are a few exceptions to that rule, but I think those are so rare we can ignore them. I mean, the, the entire website is also in Git and then there's just a separate Git repository on, the, on GitHub. So you can actually update the um, the website as well as with pull requests and um yes and there's um there are some other documentation like there's a the book everything curl is also on git but it's in a separate git uh, is actually in, on my github so they're all github repositories one way or another basically um, the next question is, what is the most unusual use of curl you have come across? Oh, wow. Uh, most unusual. Uh, I mean, curl is for internet transfers, right? So it's actually not, I, I don't think anyone has ever used curl for anything that, that isn't internet transfers. But I think what, what is more fun is in what kind of surroundings and people are actually using internet transfers. And one of my favorite uh, use cases, I know that when, you know, I, I collect s screenshots from people when they find uh, uh, curl licenses on different things and they show send me photographs of, look at this device, it says it has curl. And two of my favorites, I think, is one of these is a kitchen blender, I think, which is a, just a kitchen device, which I think it's, I think it's a blender with a tiny, tiny, um, color screen. I think the screen is for recipes or something and it shows and it uses curl and I, f I find that hilarious. And I also like the, uh, that, that's, that's one of my favorites. And another favorite is, uh, is I think it's, it's a Garmin watch, a smartwatch that says that it may contain curl in it. Two of my uh, favorites. But otherwise, of course, it curl is used literally in everything that is uh, internet connected these days. Awesome. Uh, the next question is always wondered about curl versus um, WGET. Uh, they are so similar that in principle, they maybe can merge into one tool. Do you think it's realistic in this case? How about the idea of similar FOSS projects merging in general from various perspectives, technical, psychological, etc.? <laughs> yeah. So, um, um, W get actually existed before curl was created, but I didn't I didn't know about it. So when I when I when I started curl, I was looking for something like W get and didn't find it. So I started my own project. So maybe if I had found that, I would have chosen a different route in life. But in and over the years, I I'm a, I'm good friends with most of people of the people, and I I think I've, I'm friends with all the different maintainers of WGET through the years. I've, so uh, it's not that I don't know them and they don't know me and so, but, and over the years I've actually pushed them several times about switching to using libcurl for the transfers in WGET. So they would just do a different front end with, uh, with libcurl as a li uh, transfer provider, but they've never really been that keen f to that idea. So they've never done it. and. Um, they have a slightly different angle to what the purpose of their tool compared to curl. And I think it's fine. So I think, I don't think the tools can actually merge into one tool. I think that would be 
hard because we have sort of different use cases and different goals with our tools they could uh, use libcurl within their engine if they wanted to but maybe it's good that they don't it, it also adds to sort of it's a diversity thing right so now we can use they have a completely different implementation than we do and we're we're completely separate so i don't know they're i mean they're a separate project there are more projects than just these two so people do go their own ways and we all have our different motivations why we do that so yeah i don't have any better answer to that sounds good uh the next question is should we sync up with the master branch using rebase or merge when we update our branch which that's an excellent question and i should have mentioned that right uh, uh, we use rebase so we basically use a very clean linear development uh, tr uh, history in, in git so we we rebase everything so we typically rebase every pr when we merge them as well so there are no merge commits at all unless we do a mistake but rebase is our friend <clears throat> that's how we do it great just um waiting for a couple more questions if people have any Uh, the next one uh, is, is there a code example for using Wolf SSL with curl for beginners? Oh, yes, there are plenty. So well, speaking of then, Wolf SSL is the, when you build curl with Wolf SSL, you select Wolf SSL as the TLS backend for curl. And the API for curl is still the same, independent of which TLS backend you use. So basically, any example you can find using curl and tls or like https uh, any of those examples will work even with a wolf ssl build, um, powered curl so if you go to the curl website and you look for examples you will see that we have well there are like a hundred different standalone examples there not all of them will use https not all of them will use tls but a lot of them will, and all of them will work just like that with Wolf, TLS, uh, Wolf SSL as well as the TLS backend. So it's it's really it really doesn't matter which TLS library you use. I mean, it doesn't uh, change the API to curl. It may change a little bit of which features you can use and some of that. But for the for the from the, the API perspective. It's the same, and it's really convenient because it, you can follow the AP, the examples and read the docs, and everything is straightforward. All right. Uh, any more questions? And if you want to see more, if you want to see how I actually develop curl, I've done a bunch of different. Twitch streams in the past, so you can go to my YouTube channel, Donald Stenberg, and uh, you can see how I do. If you want to get a visual of how it actually works when I develop, and I've done a bunch of them, and I do them r regularly, so I will do more in the future too. If you if you're interested in that. Anyway, this seems that we don't have any more questions. Yeah, uh, but if you do, um, you know, in a, any later time, feel free to, you know, email us at fax at Wolf SSL. Um, and yeah, feel free to, you know, have any comments or feedback on the webinar as well. Uh, thank you everyone for joining this webinar and a special thanks to Daniel for leading us on today's topic. Um, again, the webinar was recorded and will be made available on our YouTube channel shortly after the presentation. Again, I invite you to follow us on Twitter at WolfSSL as well as our other socials. And thank you so much for coming um, and have a great day. Bye. Bye.